Here's another problem. Here we have a right triangle where one side has a length of 7 and one side has a length of 3. And I'd like you to pause the video and try to figure out how big is this angle and how big is this side. This problem was a little bit different um, from the last few problems that we've done, so it might have given you a little bit of difficulty. And I hope that if it did give you dif some difficulty, your reaction to that was to try to use more of the systematic approach and notation that we've been seeing. Um, so if there's anyone there uh, watching the videos who has uh, been skipping some steps and not using all the notation, well, um, that's okay as long as the problems are easy for you. But if the problems are giving you difficulty, then you want to go back to being more systematic and using more of the notation that we've been presenting in these videos. For example, we've been indicating the given information with asterisks. So let's continue to do that. So that later on when I figure out new numbers, I won't forget that these were the numbers that I was originally given. And also we've been indicating the angle that the question is asking us about with the asterisk. Now this asterisk doesn't mean that we've been given this angle. We haven't been given the angle. This asterisk is just to remind ourselves that this is the angle we're focusing on. Clearly we want to focus on the angle that the question is about. All right, and now it would help to label the three sides, hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite. This side is the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. This side should be labeled adjacent, ADJ, for adjacent because it's adjacent to the angle that we marked with the asterisk. And this side should be labeled OPP for opposite because it's opposite to the angle that we labeled with the asterisk. Now, you might have recognized that this problem was somewhat similar to the previous problems because, again, you were given two sides. This is another problem where you were given two sides. Well, we know that when you're given two sides, you don't need trig functions to find the third side. Uh, if you're given two sides, you can just use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. So let's write down our Pythagorean theorem, which says that the hypotenuse squared equals one leg squared plus the other leg squared. It's a good idea to write the general formula before you start plugging in. What should I plug in for the hypotenuse? Well, in this problem, we know the hypotenuse. It's 7. So I'll plug in 7. What can I plug in for one of the legs? Well, we know that this leg is 3. And how about the final leg? What should I plug in for the final leg? Well, we don't know how long the final leg is, so we'll leave that as a variable. So this is what we get when we plug in. Remember that every right triangle has three sides. One of the sides is the hypotenuse, the one that's opposite the right angle, and the other two sides are the legs. Well, we can simplify this. 7 squared is 49. 3 squared is 9. So we get 49 equals 9 plus the leg squared. Now remember our goal is to solve this equation for this leg variable. Solving an equation involves getting the variable by itself. How can we get this variable by itself? Well, we have to remove the other things that are on the right-hand side of the equation. We have to remove everything that's on the right-hand side of the equation until all we have left is the leg. Well, there's two things we have to remove. We have to remove this number 9 and we have to remove this square. Uh, so it turns out to be much better to remove the 9 first. You can't really get rid of the square until you've gotten rid of the 9. Now, remember the way we remove things is by doing the opposite. Um, how is the 9 attached to this side of the equation? How is the 9 attached here? Well, that might be clearer if we put this sign in. You can see that the 9 is really being added to the right-hand side. The 9 is being added to the right-hand side. So doing the opposite would involve subtracting the 9 from the right-hand side. What do we have left if we subtract 9 from the right-hand side? What do we have left if we subtract 9 from the right-hand side? Well, then all we would get, have left, is the leg squared. That was the purpose of subtracting the 9, to remove this 9 term. So when we subtract 9 from the right-hand side, the 9 term disappears. But remember the golden rule of algebra. Um, anything we do to the right-hand side, we also have to do to the left-hand side. If we're going to subtract 9 from the right-hand side, we have to subtract 9 from the left-hand side as well. What's 49 minus 9? It's 40. Please notice we're not adding 9 to the left-hand side. We're subtracting 9, doing the opposite. 
So we get 40 equals the length squared. Well, now we've made some progress because there's fewer things on the right-hand side of the equation. We still need to get rid of this square. And we do that by doing the opposite. What's the opposite of squaring? The opposite of squaring is square rooting. Uh, what happens when we take the square root of this term? Well, if we take the square root, um, all we have left is just the length. Taking the square root gets rid of this square term. Uh, and then we have to take the square root of the 40 as well. That's the golden rule of algebra. And we'll just focus on the positive square root because we're looking for a length, which has to be positive. Okay, so you could say that the leg is square root of 40, or maybe it's better to get a decimal answer. So you can use your calculator to find the square root of 40. According to my notes, that will come out to be approximately 6.3. So the leg is approximately 6.3, and now we can build that information into our sketch. So how is this problem different from what we've seen before? Well, um, on the last few problems, I have been giving you the two legs, and then you had to find the hypotenuse. Previously, I was giving you the two legs, and you had to find the hypotenuse. But on this problem, I gave you one leg and, and the hypotenuse, and you had to find the other leg. You can see that on this problem, we were given a leg and the hypotenuse, and we had to find the other leg. Whereas on the previous problems, I gave you the two legs, and you had to find the hypotenuse. Um, so we can use Pythagorean theorem pretty easily for either type of problem. Maybe this type of problem was a little bit more algebra and a little bit more difficult. So in this case where we were actually solving for a leg, we had to do a little bit more algebra, but we were still basically using the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, it wasn't uh, that different from the problems that we've seen before. But of course it's very important when you plug in that you don't plug the 7 in as a leg. The 7 doesn't represent a leg, the 7 represents the hypotenuse. So we have to plug it in on the left hand, in on the left hand side, not on the right hand side. 